G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph Mayhew here. I'm stoked you can be with me today that we can hang out and we can chat about things photography. Today I want to talk about the five essential ingredients that you need in every single photograph to take a timeless, banging, epic image that you go, mm -hmm, yes, that's what I want. And so we're going to get into it. And to do that, we're going to go back to 2006. Let's go. <laughs> just not working. Gosh. Oh, it's so good. You came with me. Stoked for that. Now, this story begins with a text message I got from my mum. And she texts me one day and says this. I found your 2006 Seymour calendar this week. You have certainly come a long way. <laughs> You're not wrong, mum. You're not wrong. 2006 it was like 50 years ago. Hope your cough has gone. It has nearly. I've had bronchitis, so we're coming good. Love, mum. Oh, isn't that nice? And so I said, can you send it up? She goes, absolutely. So she sends it up and it's here. The whole family have been keen out of their minds to see this, as have I, but I wanted to save it for you guys, the creative crew who join me every Tuesday, every Saturday, in between, who've bought some merch, see some nice merch has just come out, got some this happening. And also if you wanna buy me a coffee, some of you have been so generous. I just uh, mean so much that you guys would like, care and support and just yeah want to be part of this experience so shall we look at the calendar as a storm rolls in overhead i don't know if you can hear the thunder through the mic but here it is 2006 mayhem publications mayhem publications what's i thinking oh 2006 calendar so let's talk about these five things that you need to take a great photograph and apply them to my work and evaluate my work from all that time ago. The first is you need a camera. You cannot take a photograph without a camera. Drop the mic, end of video, boom. Talk about value for money, right? All right, second, you need a location. A location is where you are. It could be in this studio. It could be outside, um, down by the beach, up a mountain with your family and friends. It doesn't matter. There is a location which is a place. Then you need light. You need light. Otherwise, well, they're all black. It's like you've got your lens cap on, really. But light is everything in photography. The manipulation and the use of light to create a beautiful and unique effect is really what you want. You hear that? Now it's pouring with rain. Oh, this is exciting. Next is composition. Composition is how you put an image together. It's where you put the subject. It's how you frame the subject. It's the feel you want to get and the vibe you want to get and how you put all of that together in one shot is the composition. And finally is the settings that you need to pull off the look and effect and feel that you want. So those five things that I'm going to go into later on in another video and really explore more deeply and wrestle with. But today we're going to apply that to my work from 2006. Woo, here we go. And the first one, the opener, and I'll put them on the screen so you can look at them. I've scanned them in, is Eildon. This is Lake Eildon. If you've ever watched The Castle, the movie, you're a legend and you understand where Bonnie Doon is. And if you haven't, you need to watch it now. And if you're overseas, as many of you are, and you like The Castle, The Castle was a movie about Australian culture and you should just watch it because you'll just see how weird us Aussies are. But Bonnie Doon is the place in the castle, which is also where I took this. It's in Lake Eildon, and there's these massive trees that grow out of the lake. And we were fishing one night, and I took this shot. Now, the problem with this shot, I had a camera. Yes, the location was pretty good. There was lots of options. But my composition was too close. I was too tucked in. I should have gone way, way back and actually shot a wider shot of the tree with the sunrise, sunset in the background. And then finally, I should have smoothed out some of this water or caught some of the light on this water and exposed for the detail in the tree. It's a bit too dark. But if we go to January 4, it says begin to ponder fishing, fishing excursion. Ah, go me. I used to, I still do a bit, but I used to do a lot of fishing. And then here on the 20th of January, it says um, watch the Aussies flog South Africa. Uh, sorry to all my South African viewers. That's uh, about the cricket. All right, moving on to February. This is a beautiful sunset that was outside one night. I said to Lyndall the other day, I can pick any uh, a photo if it's a sunrise or a sunset just by looking at it. So you can challenge me if you like. So she, can you really? She was very impressed. I was like, nice, I will take that because a lot of the stuff I do doesn't impress Lyndall at all. But that impressed her. 
I digress. So this was taken from the backyard, obviously. It's just a look, see the sky, point, shoot. The sky was a stunner. I love the ripple of it. I love the, the texture of the sky. But everything else about this shot just sucks. I should have gone out into the street. There was a graveyard next door. I should have gone to that. That could have been fascinating to capture uh, this sky. Got this ugly tree in the background. I just didn't think about it much. It was just got so excited that there was color in the sky. I ran out. Whereas nowadays I'm far more methodical about that shot. Could have exposed for a bit of a detail. But that's a big shed. That thing down the bottom. An ugly tree. So probably not worth mentioning. The thing that is worth mentioning is on the 18th of February, right here, and it's in a calendar so it's real, it says National Buy Ralph a Gift Day on the 18th of Feb. You heard it here first folks. Bring on February. Okay, this next one was really important photo for me. This is uh, one of the most my most favorite photos I ever took because it was the first time I did long exposure. I um, put the settings to adjust and focus on the stars and then I left the camera out overnight under a little bit of a canopy so it wouldn't get condensation in it and I pushed bulb and I let it shoot for as long as need be until the battery died. That was about two hours and you can see this little blob right in the middle that was actually a calendar uh, it's because the calendar's old not an issue with the photograph. I really like the light trails in this and it's not not edited so this is just as came out of camera. Um, it was a film camera at the time, so uh, it was quite exciting. But I, nowadays I'd try and put something really interesting in the foreground if I were going to do that. All right, moving on to April. As the storm rages around, I'm gonna be fascinated to hear if you can see if you can hear any of this storm. I can barely hear myself talk. So uh, a couple of months ago I did a video on Astro and in that video I featured a tree down in Melton where I come from and that tree is this one in the bottom left hand corner. That's the same tree that I used. Obviously I was a lot closer to it shooting Astro. But this is an image taken with Melbourne in the background. Melbourne is about 50k away so about 30 miles away that's the light of the city this is obviously a 30 second exposure and I exposed it too long because the star trails have gone too long did you see me jump then <laughs> this is thunder oh it's like 10 o'clock in the morning yeah. Um, composition, not too bad. Could have shifted it a bit to the left or put the tree bang in the middle. There was probably some geographical limitations to me doing that. And light, well that's why I, took, I wanted to make the most of the light behind us in that shot. May. In the middle of the day I took a photo of a windmill. Alright, so location could have made way more of it. Uh, composition sucks could have cropped in nice and tight around that. Um, uh, I could have zoomed right back and caught the context of where it was. I could have waited till this cloud was somewhere out to the left or out to the right to make it interesting. I literally just took a photo of a windmill and I didn't even put it in the center of the frame and I did it in the middle of the day. You can tell I've got the shadow on the um, uh, windmill arm thingies. It's just a disgrace. Disgrace. Me? If you took it, go you, but I'm disappointed in myself. Then we have this epic location. Look at this. This is really cool. This is an old shack on the Yay Road just outside of Seymour. The location is really good, and the composition is not too bad. I don't mind the framing of the fence from the bottom right coming in. Draws you in to the actual um, shot. It's nestled in the trees. It looks good. None of these photos have had any editing because I didn't know how to edit back then. The issue... I find is it just washes out, doesn't it? This this shack, it washes out. It's, the roof's too bright and the, the wood's too dull. It feels like not much is actually in focus. Uh, settings for this, and the trees are all pretty sharp and the fence is pretty sharp. So I probably shot it on a 16 F stop, but I didn't, I should have just lowered my um, uh, exposure, but I didn't because I think I would have lost some of the details in the trees. These days I would do a, um, I would sh bracket it. So I'd shoot low exposure and then high exposure and then combine them afterwards. So you've got the detail and beauty of the shack, which is the feature in the middle of it, but also uh, trees around it. But that light is so harsh, like it's just brutal, which means it was the middle of the day again, even on the fence right in front, it's just brutal. So I think um, coming in the uh, evening hours or the early hours of the morning, when the sun's just popping its head up at golden hour, it would have looked really spectacular and I perhaps could have zoomed in a bit. 
I could have, um, yeah, cropped in on that. Uh, could have come up quite nice. All right. July. July is a classic example of when you see you experience something and you try and take a photo of it and fail dismally. You know when you're in a moment of beauty and the problem is our peripheral is like nearly uh, 180 degrees. And so all that information gets sucked into our brains and we go, this is beautiful and stunning. I want to take a photo of it. But then you condense down to so like this much. And, and this photo is a classic example of that. It was just a beautiful thing, um, beautiful afternoon down at the creek, but stuffed it bad. Like the photo is about nothing. It's of nothing. The light use is terrible. The settings do not complement it all. It's just crap. Do not be offended. If you've taken a photo like this, I'm saying it's crap based on what I would expect of myself now. Oh, this is cool. Again, some editing on this would have come up nice. I think I used, look at those clouds. I think that's what drew me to it. Would have been nice to compose this shot by zooming back a bit, making the tree a bit smaller. I love how it's positioned on the on the horizon. That may not have been possible. There may have been things to the right and to the left. But the blue and the clouds and the green, love it. I really like the sky. Lose a lot of the detail in the tree. Not calendar worthy though, is it? <laughs> All right, good old Aussie shack, Aussie shed. This is cool. I, I like this. I reckon now though, like I, I, what I was trying to do was get all the good stuff composed in the image. So this beautiful tree and the old shack and then just deal with everything else. But I reckon now what I do is cramp, crop right in and I just have this, the wood of the tree, which looks cool and, and just circle around that shack. Uh, the use of light, as you can see, it's really, um, I've overexposed it because the light is really white in the background. You've got some fringing around the trees and also you lose some detail in the edge of the trees, which would have meant uh, probably an exposure of maybe half a second because that the leaves are not sharp at all they were moving and so um, I think that's what might have happened there again the light is just flat it's boring it doesn't bring anything to the shot it doesn't go wow this is incredible it's just flat so good lesson there and make sure your light's not flat well done Ralph sorry okay a little bit of macro work interesting so um, light's pretty nice. It's kind of like warm and gentle. I like it. The the rusty fence. It doesn't belong in a calendar. This shot, Ralph, does not belong in a calendar. But nice little arty shot. You could have composed it with a better background. Background just looks a bit there. But obviously, I was just focusing on the spider web, which looks really cool. I used clearly an f-stop of four, and I perhaps should have used an f-stop of eight, and I should have made this bottom left thing barb in the wire I should have made that more of the focus so I should have dropped the shot down a little bit to have the barbed wire running straight through the middle and if that wasn't possible I should have made this key one that is in focus I should have put that bang in the center I reckon as you can see this is old barbed wire and then bottom right there's that new barbed wire arty shot doesn't belong in a calendar gee mum was good to get one take one wasn't she That's my mum legend okay there's a bunch of things uh, like I like the composition actually except I'm too close to the hay bale. I should have taken another step back or just zoomed out to get the whole thing in there. But I like I like the scattered ones in the back left. I like how it kind of curls around to those trees at the top. What I don't like is I don't have any of these beautiful golden colors and the textures. Uh, the hay looks like this when the sun is at noon, it's right overhead and it's just glary. And that's what's happening. This shot, would have could have either been helped by being underexposed and some of the detail brought out but if you underexpose your your hay bale gets too underexposed so maybe a bracketed shot or shoot at a different time of the day um, or get a big light and light up get your flash and light up the hay bale that's really close and expose for the back uh, that would have come up really nice so i like i like the idea i was thinking with and the direction i was going perhaps um needed a bit more a bit more work. Is that it? Am I done? <laughs> Gee, you're good sticking with me through all that. What do you think? Which one was your favorite image? Which did you like the most? Um, are there um, 
other tips you would have thrown in on any of those particular images that you would have said, oh, I would have done this and I'd done that, or I would have changed that. Um, one of the cool things to do is look back at your old photos and evaluate them. Um, I recently got asked by somebody to supply a print to a local, um, uh, an auction for a charity. And I said, go through my Instagram account and choose which one you want. And so they went back to a couple of years ago and they chose one and I was just horrified. I was like, this is so bad. It's just, it just wasn't a good shot. But then what I thought is, well, that's the one they really want. And so I, I then re-edited it. And the photo became something quite different by the end of that experience. Um, so it's worth going back and revisiting your work, evaluating yourself. Be, be tough on yourself. Don't beat yourself up, but be tough on yourself because then you'll get better. And then you'll be able to implement those five ingredients that go into every photograph so that your photography will become better and better and better. And Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a like and I'll see you soon. Usually twice a week and cheer me on and come become part of this journey. Can you hear that? That was thunder. Wow. Thunderstruck. Might have to go outside and take some photos. Mm. Anyway.